Egypt's president says he won't allow refugees from Gaza into his country, adding it would make the peninsula a target for Israel. The whole concept of transferring Palestinians from the Gaza Strip into Sinai is simply moving the fighting and resistance from the Gaza Strip to Sinai, which means Sinai will become a base for military operations against Israel. And then Israel will try to defend itself and direct its military operations against Egypt and Sinai. Egypt is committed to establishing peace. We should remain dedicated to our investment in the peace process. We should come up with a viable solution. If there is a transfer, let it be to the Negev Desert in Israel. Let Israel do what they wish to do with the military operatives in Gaza before returning the Palestinians back. All acts by Israel, cutting water and electricity, is a means to forcibly transfer Palestinians into the Sinai Peninsula, which we totally reject. Let's speak to our diplomatic editor, James Bayes. He joins us now live here in the studio in Doha. James, I want to ask you about the Security Council, what's going on there in a minute. But picking up on what Alan was saying about so many Arab leaders pulling out, saying no thank you to a meeting with Biden, if you were hoping, I guess, that Biden is coming to kind of broker some kind of ceasefire agreement, does it look like we're going that way at all? I think we may well be going to something short of a ceasefire, but some sort of humanitarian pause. But you're right, the events of the last few hours have really changed, changed things. the situation, I mean, the situation changed radically on October the 7th, and it's changed radically again. The Arab street, I think, is what's driving this. Arab leaders, I think, are saying, you know, we're not going to stick with our existing position. We n now need to have a ceasefire. Mm. Um, I don't think we're going to get a ceasefire, but we're going to get something short of that, I think. And that which brings us to what's happening in the Security Council, right? We've got this Brazilian draft text. Is that going to succeed where... The Russian one failed? Well, I'm just speaking to our colleague, Kristen Salumi, who's there, will be covering that in the next 45 minutes when it happens. Uh, and uh, there was apparently some pressure behind the scenes for the, from the US mission to the United Nations to actually delay this vote. Doesn't look that, like that's going to happen. They were supposed to vote in 45 minutes from now, right? And they are going to vote. And they are. They are. The, okay. US, the US were apparently putting some pressure on to have a delay until Biden was in the air. But that delay is not happening. It looks like the vote is definitely on 45 minutes from now. This is a resolution that the draft have been worked on for some days mm. and it's been watered down. It originally called for an immediate ceasefire. It now calls for humanitarian pauses. And what I think the US, why the US will support this resolution from everything I'm hearing, is that they will use this then to try and re um, push the plan of Secretary Blinken, which was to get the Americans out, the, those that, are, that have American passports that are in Gaza, five to six hundred people, most of them dual nationals, get them out of the Rafah crossing and get some aid in, a limited pause, and then, of course, uh, the American position is that Israel has the right to defend itself so that the bombardment would continue after that. Uh, just briefly, why did they want to delay the vote? I think the words I heard was they wanted not to have this vote while President Biden was still in the region. They wanted him on a plane out of here. That's the, uh, the understanding right. that I got from people. OK, but, but then if the idea is a pause rather than a ceasefire, what happens after that? You've, we've got some foreigners out, still got millions of Palestinians stuck in Gaza under siege. I mean, does the... The pause change the reality? It doesn't change the reality. It does mean that they're perhaps occupied, some, they're under siege, they and might, they're bombed. They might have some food and water and medicines delivered, but then they will be bombarded again. Okay, a very bleak outlook then. What's happening with diplomacy? Is this the, the big diplomatic solution this that seems perhaps to be, we were hoping this for? This seems at this stage to be all that diplomacy is able to achieve. The UN Secretary General is currently um, in or on his way from, um, from, from Beijing to Cairo. The humanitarian chief of the UN is uh, also in Cairo. They'll be hoping that this pause and then delivery of aid, if it happens, is a first step they can build on. All right. Thanks so much, James Bayes. Always appreciate your input. Thanks for coming in.